So you let your friend borrow your car and they got into an accident, or you're just curious if this is a case that's covered. It's a tough call to make and your insurance company isn't always gonna feel like they're on your side in these situations. The cleanup and the claims process and the whole situation of having a car accident is, is a mess. It's just cluttered and there's a lot of moving parts. It's even more messy when you have somebody else driving your vehicle and you weren't the primary driver. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about if you let your friend borrow your car, what are some things you should know before you hand them the keys? And does your insurance even cover that? So the rule of thumb is a big positive where in most cases, insurance naturally follows the vehicle, not the person that purchased the insurance. So with a lot of companies in a lot of states, they typically allow you to have what's called permissible use, which allows you to let somebody else drive your vehicle. Well, there are a couple exclusions to that situation where your insurance is just gonna flat out deny you. We're gonna go over those closer to the end of this video, but let's dive in a little bit further and find out where this comes from and what the path of this is. But first, let's find out a little bit more about your friend that you're letting drive your vehicle. In most cases, your friend that is driving your vehicle will likely have their own insurance policy. If they don't, then your easiest route to go is to look at your current policy, contact your agent, whatever the case is. For us, I'll just get a text message and you'll just ask the question, if I let somebody drive my car, is it covered? And in most cases, I'm gonna reply, yes, you have permissible use, they don't have their own insurance and you're good. Now, if they have their own insurance, what could happen is there's kind of some questionable pieces that your insurance is gonna ask. Is the first piece is, is it fully covered? So if your friend drives your vehicle, let's pretend that they hit a nice car and it was a $30,000 vehicle and that claim was $20,000. If you only carry 10,000 on your personal property damage, there's 10,000 left over. Their insurance is gonna kick in and typically pay that additional cost. In some cases, and actually a lot of cases, you don't see this up front, but on the background, there's something called segregation. And what segregation does is it's your insurance going after the other other insurance, it's typically the not at fault party asking the at fault party to pay what they've already paid for their customer. So either way, you're covered on your end for the limits that you've set, so it's not an out of pocket for you, but they're gonna ask that other person, your friend's insurance, to pay that bill. In this case, because it's only a $10,000 difference, they're gonna ask your friend's insurance to pay the 10,000, if not to pay the entire claim. Now it does get a little bit tricky with some states like New Jersey and New York and Florida where you have all these mixed medical pieces where you have the ability to sue your spouse and all these additional liability limits. So those are a little bit unique pieces where you should talk to more of an expert in this situation because it varies. For example, if you're in Michigan, there's PIP laws that you can pick five limits and depending on the limit and the people that live in your house, there's a medical piece that may or may not be covered. So there's a lot of like more in depth of pieces that you may want to look into that. But most cases, when you're not in those states where you have these extra medicals and these rules, is they are gonna pay that medical out and then they're gonna subrogate back to the insurance company whose driver was the fault. Even though we just said in the beginning, insurance follows the car that's protecting you, whoever insured the vehicle, it also follows the driver. If you don't have a vehicle, you can purchase something called non-owner's liability or non-owner's policy where you just insure your liability. So you can insure property damage and liability coverage just like anyone else, except you wouldn't have physical damage for your vehicle because you don't have one. And so that allows you to have insurance if you're gonna constantly drive someone else's vehicle in case they don't have enough coverage and you don't wanna be taken advantage of in a lawsuit where they're gonna come after you. A really good example is you've got a really good friend, you love hanging out with them every year or every couple of years you go on a trip, they only carry state minimums, but you have a big income to protect where they don't. So because you don't have a vehicle or you don't have a reason for in this situation, you're gonna carry that non-owners policy if you ever decide that you're gonna drive their vehicle. Because once their limits run out, the person's going straight to you if you were the one that was at fault in that claim. 
be very careful. Some policies do exclude this situation. So what you want to know and what you want to look for is, is your policy only covering you as the primary driver? Now, most of them don't. I would say nine out of 10 companies don't even think of this just because it's, it's become an issue in the news and in the past, and it just seemed deemed unfair, but it's not against the law for that to happen. So when you're buying a cheap policy and you're finding these coverages are just pennies on the dollar compared to all of these other companies and you're like well this is the best deal it's the same coverage and i'm getting all of this you're likely giving something up whether it's claims or the coverage per person for example if i purchase an insurance policy from one of those cheaper end companies then what could happen is i might let my friend who's visiting from town drive my car not knowing that they weren't even covered i've signed the paperwork that probably didn't read it like anyone does and i signed it and i said yep that Da, 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 and I'm signing away that I agree and understand these rules and all the guidelines. So that's why they want you to read through that 50 pages of data. Really, you're looking at what's called the declarations page. That's declaring the coverage. And on there, it should say something along the lines of only the primary driver, no permissible use, things like that. Some of your bigger box companies, in order to save money for you, is they'll also offer and lower those limits. For example, if you're the a person that owns a policy and let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of coverage but you let someone else drive your car they may have written in that policy that they only get fifty thousand so some companies do lower those limits where they could exclude them all together and not be covered at all in which case you're going to be tied up in a lawsuit probably on them but you also have the option where some companies will just lower that limit to save you some money so that's essentially the permissible use that we're talking about. It goes the same way if you have a friend over, you're just having a good time, you all go to bed, they take your car thinking it's okay, they technically stole it, and they drive off and crash your car. So you aren't giving them permissible use in this situation. You can claim that on your insurance, but be very careful because your insurance will go after them. Similar situations, if they caused a fire in your house and it burned the house down, your house probably has the coverage for it, but they're still gonna subrogate towards the person Person that caused that if they were liable. If they don't have insurance, they're gonna have a big lawsuit on their hands. And then the most important piece is the question that we all are curious about is my cost. How much am I at risk and what am I losing as potentially in the situation? Your insurance could go up. So what happens is your policy, because it does technically follow your car, although there's that permissible use, which extends it to a driver, then what happens is if they file a claim under your policy, which is what normally will happen, you're the primary policy, they're the secondary, and your insurance will probably go up if they pay out. If it's an at-fault claim and there's a payout on that claim, then it's likely that you're gonna have a rate increase. The thing that most agents don't realize is you can typically fight those. So just know that you have the option to dispute it. You won't 100% always win that, but there's a good chance that you will. I found that personally, I have been able to save a lot of people from those being on their record. It could happen where you both walk away from the scene, you think you're fine, and the other person quickly calls their insurance and says, this guy hit me when they didn't, when they were the one at fault. So there's kind of those, those lies that are thrown in the mix and then the investigation happens and before you know it you never realize that you didn't call your insurance and they had filed an at-fault accident against you your company paid it out your insurance rate went up and now you've got a little bit bigger of a mess to clear up especially if you didn't involve the police to get a report to show what actually happened during the accident so that your insurance could determine the fault and get you out of that mess now, if it's just a mistake on your old insurance, that's easy to fix. You need what's called a letter of experience. It's essentially on a letterhead from that company stating that it wasn't your fault in the situation of the accident. It's a one to two paragraph. You submit it to your new insurance and they usually accept it and stamp it as good. Let me know in the comments below what you guys have found. What situations have you been in? Did you notice that your policy was excluding other drivers? I'd be curious to see how those processes went and how the adjusters were able to handle that. If you want to learn more about how they handle the adjuster process, go ahead and click this video here and we'll show you how to handle and deal with typical adjusters to make it a fit for everybody where you both win. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.